Practice problem. Boron exists as two naturally occurring isotopes. Boron 10, which is 10.01, okay, and boron 11, which is 11.01. .01. Calculate the relative abundance of each isotope of boron. Okay, so <coughs> let me give you a, a, a hint as to what we have. Well, we have first boron, okay, boron 10, boron 11. Boron 10, that's the atomic mass, 10.01. <coughs> For boron 11, it's 11.01, .01, okay? It's coincidental, the fact that they're off by just one unit, okay? Not all of them will be like that. We also know that boron, if we look at according to the periodic table, okay, is 10.81, the atomic mass, okay? So here's the hint. We need that value because we're trying to find the percentages of each value. Okay? So what we have here, now we've got to figure out what are the percentage values of each one. So try this one out. Okay. Think algebra. Oh, yeah. Right? Because remember, what did, what did we have? We always had that percent, okay, multiplied by the actual atomic mass, right? Whatever our U value is. But we don't have this anymore. So if we don't have that, what are we going to let that represent? X. X. But, but the only problem with letting it equal to X is, well, if we're going to make that one equal to X, percentage and we're going to multiply that by our u value we can't put them both as x because if we do technically what does that mean they're the same there means they're, they're really the same x x x x x y, x and x y. if we add those two together our two percentages what should they equal 100 100 what 100%. But whenever we get 100%, remember we want to turn it into a decimal. Yeah. So how do we do that? You divide it by 100. Right? And you get 100 divided by 100 is? So technically, these two represent 100. Right? But one is going to be x. The other one is going to be 1 subtracted by x. Because really, what does that 1 represent? The 100%. So whatever that percentage is, it'll represent 100% of it. But we're going to subtract it by whatever that is okay. to figure out what that was. Right? Because let's say, let's say we had 45%, 55%. But we said that this was our x. So 1 minus x is? What's the x? We said 55%, right? But let's say, but if, it, okay, but remember if it was 100, right? Or if it was, we'll change it to that. Mm, let's get rid of this. Okay, so to keep it, okay, so 1 minus 0.55, right? What is 1 minus 0.55? And what do we say? One of them is 55%. The other one represents 45%. So that's what it means. And here is what your equation should look like. Okay. No, no, but you're gonna put in you're gonna put in numbers in those in the place of those words. Be careful the algebra. Let's 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 start a little bit here. So Average atomic mass, what is it? What does this represent here? Okay, so 10.81 equals x, we don't know, right? It's just x. x times the atomic mass of B10, which is? 10.01. Plus, we have 1 minus x times the atomic mass of? Which is 11. Point. How do you put a one minus x in brackets? Hmm? Because 
what we have here is we're multiplying this 1 minus x. We're treating this as a term. Right? Because if I, just, if I don't put them, technically I have one, two terms. Right? If I just kept that, it, it, in, in other words, all I'm going to be doing is multiplying my 11.01 .01 by x. But in fact, what I want is I want kind of like a reverse distributive law where I want this number multiplied within. Okay? So what I have here is 10.81 equals x times 10.01. 10.01 x. 11.01 .01 times 1? 11.01. 11.01 11 .01 times negative x minus 11.01 x. So what I want to do now is I want to collect my x is on one side of the equal sign and my whole numbers on the other side because I want to find the value of, what am I trying to find? Value of x. So, I'm going to bring this over, and I'm going to bring this over, because I'm going to bring x's over this side of the equal sign. Okay, so I'm going to get 11.01x minus, right, because remember, this was negative on this side, negative 11.01, .01, it becomes positive on this side. All right, this 10.01x is positive on this side of the equal sign, but when I move it on this side, it becomes negative equals. Right. I'm going to keep this term here on this side, and which means I'm going to move this term on that side. And I'm going to get 11.01 .01 minus 10.81. So 11.01x .01 minus 10.01x. 1.01x, which is just x, x is equal to, so when you subtract 11.01 .01 minus 10.81, 0.2, right? Remember, the least number of significant digits in my question are? So 0.2, that's one significant digit. So to add another significant digit? 0, 0, 0. zero. So, but that's not a percent. So I want to change a decimal to a percent. Times. I'm going to now multiply it by? By? By 100, right? So 0 0.2000 as a percent becomes? 20. But that's one significant digit. I want four significant digits. So what am I going to do? 20.0. How many is that? One more. One more. Right? 20 percent, which means 20 percent is of, of the first boron, right? The boron 10. What percentage is the, the boron 11? 80. Okay. Because it will give us a total of 100 percent. Okay. So that's why we get this 1 minus x, because remember, what are we changing a percent to? We're changing, so 100%, we want to find the total of 100%. But when we find a total of 100%, we change 100% into a decimal, and it becomes 1. So that 1 used to be 100%. 100% minus x, whatever that percentage was. Okay. 